I'll tell you the worst part about buying used books is getting the stickers off of the books. I don't know what DI uses to put the stickers on their used books, but I'm pretty sure that it's held on here by the ceiling power. Because I cannot get the sticker off. Yes, I did it! <laughs> Hello again! So this is part two of a two-part episode in my most cringe-worthy LDS book covers. So if you want to see part, or the first four or five or however many we did, go check out the other video. I will link to it somewhere, probably down here. Number five. Faith Precedes the Miracle by Spencer W. Campbell. Like, this is another kind of like recurring theme in LDS books, and I have a lot of books that are like this. And I use this one because it's kind of like the more recognizable one where someone would be able to probably go and pick this up and look at it in person and see how bad it is. But like the texture of this is really funky. And just the the rendering of this picture on this cover, just, no, oh, it's gross. And the font, you know, it's, it's not horrible. I've seen better. But like, I don't, how, where is the faith? Where is the miracle? Is the miracle the fact that you were walking through the desert and you survived? Like, are we going for, like, Moses and Abraham thing? Like, I don't... I don't understand what I'm supposed to be taking away from this. Like, why would you put all of the energy into putting this on here? And I don't understand how it's supposed to relate to the title. Number four. I Walked to Zion by Susan Arrington Madsen, okay? And I don't mean to particularly, like, point out and pick on these particular people. Uh, the fact that I picked up two of them by the same author really is just coincidental. But I really want you to just fully appreciate the creepiness of these children. Like, this one, this one right here, I don't trust her. She looks like the stuff of nightmares that is going to, like, show up in my sleep and kill me. Like, the the rendering of the eyes on this cover is something that I don't think they anticipated. And, like, I get what they were trying to do. They used, like, this kind of, like, it's almost like a coppery, shimmery type of color because I think they're trying to make this look like a, a daguerreotype or something. But the, what it did to the eyes of these children is just creepy beyond imagination and so like this is like the type of thing like i have like a really bad fear of like dolls and porcelain dolls and stuff like that and so like i just imagine like these things being propped up on a dresser and like watching me in the night they're coming for you <laughs> number three and there's just so much to cringe about with this one and it's an african legacy by rendell and maybe and I don't know, I haven't read this, and when I saw this, I was really excited about it, because it sounds like it's going to be about, like, the history of the church in Africa, like, story of the dawning of the gospel in black Africa, oh, that's kind of cringeworthy, I'm sure there were better ways that you could word this, um, so, you know, right when the church is being introduced into the African continent, that sounds fascinating. I can't wait to read about that. But then, like, you look at this cover, and there's just no end to the things that are just do better. Okay, so, like, this whole thing, like, this picture, like, even if that had been, like, the whole cover, just do, like, the photo cover, that would have been okay. But then, like, around here, you've got, like, these, like, tacky tribal elements that look like they were honestly drawn by a white person who just... I don't know, I was just kind of making it up as they go along. Like, this doesn't strike me as something that is, like, historically accurate or even, like, culturally sensitive. This looks like really, like, a really yucky job of, like, someone in, like, a clip art program. And, okay, story of the dawning of the gospel in black Africa. There's more people that live in Africa than just black people. Like, I, uh, like, you're, you're... Is that am, am I being weird? Is I, am I the only person that gets struck as that being kind of weird? Just the way that they phrase that. Brother to brother revisited twenty years of glory, an insightful look back, a grateful glance forward. Like it, this subtitle goes on for almost the entire length of the book. Like pick a subtitle. 
You don't need three different subtitles. If one of them wasn't good enough, it probably wasn't good enough at all. Just drop one and pick the one that you actually meant. So this is just cringeworthy from top to bottom. I'm sure it's going to be a great read from a fascinating time in history, but please fix the cover. Number two, and I couldn't be bothered to take the sticker off of this one, so I apologize for that. But this is Mothers of the Prophets by Leonard J. Arrington and Susan Arrington Madsen. And this is supposed to be about the different Mothers of the Prophets, okay? And, like, I, I really wish you could see this in person and just see how, like, cringeworthy this artwork is. And, like... It's cringeworthy just because it's such a poor rendering of what they were trying to do. It looks like they're going for like a pencil drawing and the lines are really light down here. But like imagine you did it with like paint at like a really crappy resolution. Like that's what this looks like down here. And then you come up here and it looks like someone just took the pencil and like went like this as they were finishing it. But they were angry. Why are we angry? Like, ugh. I mean, looking at this makes me angry. Maybe that's why. They just look at it like, this is so bad. I just, I want to scribble out my anger. And, like, I hate when they use, like, these really swirly, like, scripty type fonts to where, like, you have to, like, sit there and, like, look at it a, for a second before you can figure out what it's trying to say. Like, this is not 1910 Edwardian wedding invitation. You don't need all of the swoop -de doodles in here. I don't, I don't get it. And plus, like, again, the color rendering, this is, like bright orangey ugly red that like fades into like it almost like a water stained pink so yeah really they did themselves a favor when they gave this a new cover and this is the new cover okay so you know a lot less hideous and this is actually a revised edition and as you can see it's like quite a bit bigger and longer so that was part of the other reason that I replaced it it wasn't just replacing an ugly cover it was replacing it where the innards are significantly different probably than what's in that one so that one is going the way of the world I'm getting rid of that one and I'm replacing it with this and this one is isn't actually an LDS book but it's a, a historical book that I could imagine being useful to like an LDS audience as like they're reading biblical history and stuff and it's the the work the complete works of jo, uh, Flavius Josephus, and this one is kind of more of like an honorable mention than anything else, just because look at these striped pajamas that it's wearing. It's got tacky striped pajamas, and it's like ugly traffic cone orange and white and like dingy like gray, and then it looks like someone scribbled on here with permanent marker, and they put like a big old tacky font on top of it, you know, because it needed that extra oomph of something, as if this wasn't oomph enough. Number one. Number one. My number one most cringeworthy book. And it's because of the content, it's because of the cover, and it's almost kind of mortifyingly embarrassing to share it with people. But I'm gonna do it anyway, because you are valuable to me. The number one the number one most cringeworthy LDS book that I have on my shelf is this one. And they shall become one flesh, a sensible sex guide for the bride and groom. I honestly don't know what we were thinking when we bought this one. I know exactly what we were thinking. Um, my husband and I were engaged and we were getting ready to be sealed in the temple and we were at the, the LDS bookstore, the This Is The Place bookstore, right down the street from the from the DC temple and we were digging through they have a used like a bargain section there where you can just dump off all the books you don't want anymore and they will try to get rid of them for you at a steep discount and we were looking through there and we'll buy like some books just as almost like the gag value and that's what this started out as it was a gag book we picked it up it was probably all of like 35 cents it may have actually been a thing too where like you have you buy like four books and you get the fifth one free and you know this was just kind of a placeholder so we could get some better books for free or something and so we got it it just it's like a bright ugly purple and then pink and you've got like the weird like gender symbols on it and like the only thing more cringeable about about this book 
it's like when you start to get into it and you actually read it, like, it started out as being, like, almost like a competition of who could make the other one squirm the worst as we, like, read this out loud to each other, and then it got so bad we had to put it down. It was horrible, and I honestly don't know why we're keeping this, because we don't... Just why? 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 Right? So this is the number one most cringeworthy cover and book that we have on our entire shelf of LDS books. So please don't expect a review of this one because I'm not going to give one. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure to click that like, comment, and subscribe button. Leave a comment. Leave a suggestion of a book you'd like me to review. Leave some of, like, examples of your most cringeworthy LDS books. I know you have them. If not, your parents have them. When you go to visit them for Thanksgiving, take a picture of their most cringeworthy LDS book that they have. Share it here. Share it in comments. Share it with everybody. It's good for a laugh. And thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you again. Bye! Aw, I gotta clean all that up.